Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are group four, uh, and we will be presenting video super resolution using deep learning techniques. Uh, this is our team. I'm here with Marwa Suleiman, Hamad Naggar, Isra Fahmi, Darin Hussein, and Zahra Shabuddin, and myself, Mohammed Barakat. Uh, in our presentation, we'll go through uh, uh, our hypothesis and contribution, our proposed architecture, the experiments we've done and its, their results, uh, our discussion and final remarks. Uh, so let us begin by uh, describing what we've been doing through the last two semesters. Uh, so we've been studying uh, video super resolution, which is uh, the process of enhancing the quality of uh, videos. Uh, so at the moment, there are many uh, neural network models for VSR. However, there exists many trade-offs uh, between these models. So we proposed a new model uh, to minimize the trade-offs between the different uh, existing models. Uh, then we performed many experiments and we've compared them with the existing models. Uh, so in our experiment, we'll be explaining all the process in extreme details, and we will conclude with a final conclusion and our remarks. Uh, so let us begin by a brief introduction about VSR and our conclusion uh, and our uh, hypothesis. So uh, video super resolution or VSR is the process of generating high, uh, high resolution video from a low resolution video. So uh, a video is essentially a sequence of frames. So VSR or video super resolution can be thought of image super resolution applied to each frame in a video. However, in video super resolution, the temporal dimension needs to be taken into consideration. The relationship between each frame in a video to the successive or the preceding frames needs to be taken into consideration. And this is the main difference between video super resolution and image super resolution. So why do we do VSR or video super resolution? Because it has many extensive uh, applications in real life. It can be used in healthcare in generating high resolution images and uh, in, uh, in entertainment in generating, uh, in, sorry, in uh, high definition television and in remote sensing and surveillance. Current VSR models have many issues and challenges uh, in them. First of all, there is a need, there is a huge need for a lightweight super resolution model because many of the existing models are heavyweight and they take a long inference time for frames. So there is a need for a lightweight super resolution frame, uh, super resolution model. Also, there needs a more effective scene change algorithms to take the temporal dimension into consideration, as well as the need for more reasonable evaluation criteria for the quality of videos. This leads us to our hypothesis. Uh, so the main issue is that current models for VSR are hard to deploy because of the heavy weight of the models and the trade-off between the weight of the models, the quality of the video, and the natural, and the natural flow of the generated video. This is why we, pro we are proposing a model which integrates two of the state-of-the-art models. Uh, it combines the generator of TikuGAN with the discriminator of RBPN, which are two models, to improve the temporal coherence and uh, maintain the quality of the generated video. Now part of the training occurs in the discriminator, which keeps the model size constant and enhances the quality of the video. Now, Zahra will continue with the proposed architecture. Okay, so for the proposed architecture, we'll go through the base models, which are the generators and the discriminator, the loss functions, and the data set. Starting by the base models, we're having two main base models, the TQ GAN, which stands for Temporal Coherent GAN, and the RBBN, which stands for Recurrent Pack Projection Network. Uh, starting by the TQ GAN, TQ GAN is, at, um, is a generative adversarial network, which means it contains a generator and a discriminator. For the generator, it generates the high resolution frames from an input of low resolution frames. Then the generator um, takes the high resolution frames and feeds them into a, mo a motion estimation module. Uh, after that, the generator takes the low resolution frames and the previously estimated high resolution frames by means of concatenation to generate the high resolution frames. Uh, it also warp, the, warp is, the warping is done on the previous high resolution frames to get the newly generated high resolution frames. And regarding the discriminator, which will be our focus uh, in this project, the discriminator, it compares the uh, high resolution frames with the ground truth. No, next, okay. Uh, for the ground truth. Also, uh, the discriminator uh, proposed a new ping pong loss function. This loss function is uh, to get the, the, the highly um, low resolution a temporal flow between the low resolution image and the high resolution generated images. 
Uh, for that discriminator, the discriminator receives and concatenates uh, a triplets of frames. Also, it guides the generator to learn from uh, the high resolution frame and the uh, low input, low resolution frames. Also, the generator penalizes uh, the, the discriminator. Sorry, penalizes the generator if the uh, if the generated frames contain artifacts or unrealistic. And uh, finally, is aware that frames is uh, to classify the unrealistic and unnatural temporal flows. Uh, then uh, for the generator, which we will use in our model, it's, uh, as I mentioned, it's the recurrent back projection network. Uh, the basic concept behind back projection is to iteratively calculate the residual image as a reconstruction error between the target image and a set of neighboring frames, which in this case, they used six neighboring frames. And we will mention it later in our model, we reduced the number of neighboring frames. Also, it, uh, it exploits the temporal relationship between adjacent frames. Uh, furthermore, the RBBN is a superior results by combining the benefits of the original multi-image super resolution and the back projection image. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, so for the generator here, it has the three main features, the feature extraction module, the projection module, and the reconstruction module. Starting by the feature extraction module, it has two main rules. Uh, one is to uh, extract the features from the target frame, and the other is to extract the features from the concatenation of target frame and neighboring frame. Uh, to feed them into uh, a model to get the, uh, the, the high resolution image. And the second uh, module is the projection module. It consists of an encoder and a decoder. And finally, for the reconstruction module, it consists of a residual blocks and uh, single image super resolution and multiple image super resolution to produce the high resolution frames. So this will be used as our generator in the model. Next slide. Okay, so for the architecture here, as I mentioned, the generator will be used from the RBB from the RBBN network, while the discriminator will be used from the Tico GAN to make sure that we're having a good accuracy and a good temporal flow. And now Darin will continue with his functions. So regarding our loss functions, we have been dealing with five main loss functions. The first one is the standard GAN loss function, or what is commonly known as the min-max function. Its main uh, aim is that the generator tries to minimize the function while the discriminator tries to maximize it. The second loss function is the pixel loss function. Uh, it deals with the pixels by trying to minimize the absolute error between them. Then the third function is the warping function, which deals with the neighborhood uh, frames and tries to minimize the error between them. Then the perceptual or feature loss function, it compares, the, sorry, it compares the semantic content of the practical video, which define using the adversarial network. Uh, then finally, uh, finally, the newly introduced ping pong loss function, which reduce long-term to temporal uh, details uh, by trying to reduce artifacts and at the same time, um, uh, keeping the details. Next slide, Bart. Uh, so what we are aiming here is to maintain, as uh, Barakat said, uh, high accuracy while enhancing the spatiotemporal coherence. So that's why we are depending on our BPN uh, model as a generator for our GAN network, as it uh, uh, records a high state-of-the-art accuracy, and using Tico GAN as our discriminator as it adds temporal coherence. So while we were um, setting our environment, we needed to, to set specific things. We used the NVIDIA, um, uh, the Alienware uh, with one GPU. Uh, it uses GeForce RTX uh, 390, and at the same time uses the NVIDIA driver. Uh, but we, when we were trying to uh, run the, our uh, base models, we found that they needed a lot of dependencies and libraries to be introduced. So that's why we have been installing this list of dependencies. Now, regarding our data set, we have used the main data set that is used in VSR models. Uh, some are for testing and others for uh, training. We have used uh, VIT4 and the famous TOS3 for testing, and vimu 90 k and vimu tkugan for uh, training. Now, regarding the evaluation criteria, the usual criterion for evaluating the quality of uh, super resolution is through the peak to signal ratio, commonly known as base and R. The main um, value of base and R is that measured the ratio between the maximum possible power of an image and the power of the corrupting noise that affect the quality of its representation. However, uh, its value only is not able to reflect the video quality uh, from a human perception. That is, even if the face in R value is high, that doesn't mean that it's appealing for humans. That's why we have used uh, another qualities that assessment matrix, the, like LTIPS and TOF. Uh, 
LPIPS, which stands for Learn Perceptual Image Patch Similarity. It evaluates the similarity between <laughs> images. <laughs> Uh, it evaluates the similarity between image patches. The matrix is close to the subjective evaluation of human eyes. Therefore, LPIPS is more accurate than the first matrix. Higher's mean more different, while lower's mean more similar. And finally, TOF, which measured the pixel-wise difference of motion from estimated uh, sequences of frames. Uh, so uh, that's why we have been comparing the uh, results from the base models uh, presented in the original papers. And as can be seen, PSNR value is uh, preferred higher, and that's why it was obtained by RBPN due to its highly structured architecture. While um, LPIPS and TOF uh, uh, got better results uh, in TikuGAN as it's more visually appealing. Now my colleague Nagar will continue with our experiments. So uh, <clears throat> here you can see uh, briefly our experiment sequence. And we started by uh, training TikuGAN and RBPN, which are uh, our base models. Then we integrated them. And uh, finally, we uh, tested again RBPN, but with different settings in order to match our uh, configurations for uh, RBPN, which is our model. Okay, so again, our experiment one, we started by training uh, RBPN and we faced a, a major problem while training RBPN, which was that we couldn't fit uh, this whole model inside our GPUs because it's, it's relatively a, a big model. So we solved this problem by uh, decreasing the number of frames, which uh, if, yeah, of course affected the accuracy of uh, the model. And we also decreased this, uh, the batch size. And we trained the model for 150 epochs uh, as uh, suggested by the paper. Next, we trained uh, TikuGAN and we, uh, with a slight modification of training it on uh, two GPUs instead of one, as uh, the code that was published on GitHub was uh, utilizing only one GPU. So uh, after, uh, this slight modification, we uh, reduced the training time from nine days to around uh, 1.5 days. And we also produced a very small uh, inference time relative to the other model, which is uh, uh, 40 milliframes per second. Then we uh, integrated the two models and we did that uh, basically by uh, removing the generator of TikuGAN and uh, uh, converting the uh, RBPN model from a feedforward network to uh, a generator network. And we basically integrated them together and we modified them in order to match uh, our data set. Next, uh, Mara will continue with the detailed uh, experiments that we made. Uh, so after we integrated our model, which is the generator as RBPN and the discriminator of uh, TikuGAN, so the model is now ready for some experiments to do. So um, the first experiment is that we used all the losses we mentioned, which are the ping pong loss, the pixel, the feature, warping, and GAN loss, of course. Uh, we used four neighbor frames per, per each frame. So to remind you, the neighbor frames are the frames that are uh, just before and uh, after the uh, frame we are interested to generate high resolution for. Uh, and to also, uh, it's a, I want to mention that uh, the neighbor, sorry, the number of neighbors uh, affect the size of the model because, uh, as we mentioned in the RBBN, each neighbor is fed into like a block of the uh, network. So increasing the number of neighbors actually increases the size of the model. So we tried as much as we can to minimize the this uh, amount of uh, neighbors while maintaining good accuracy. We also used the Vimeo TikuGAN uh, dataset, and uh, the training time for this experiment took around 3.5 days. Uh, the second experiment, uh, we removed the ping pong loss to monitor its uh, effect, and the removing the effect of removing it. So uh, we used the L1 feature loss, warping loss, and GAN loss, which are I mean, the losses except uh, the ping pong. And we used three neighbor frames per each frame. 
and uh, training took around three days and test, uh, training on the same data set. And we will compare all of these, or the results of all these experiments uh, later. Uh, the third experiment is that we uh, did some fine tuning. We um, trained a part of the generator and then loaded it. So the, con the training continues from uh, this uh, point. And uh, now I'll compare the, uh, the result of the three experiments. Oh, sorry, the fifth experiment was that we uh, trained the RBBN, which is the base model for the generator, but with, the, with our settings, so to have a fair comparison. So uh, we, uh, we used the same uh, neighbor frames and uh, the same crop size and the uh, same settings we used for training our experiments. So here you can see a table comparing the uh, three experiments we did and with their values to determine the best one in order to compare them with the, with the base models. So uh, as you can see here, experiment two uh, got the best uh, accuracies for the PSNR, which, which represents the accuracy or the quality of the videos and uh, the LPIPS, which and the LPIPS and temporal, uh, sorry, and TOF, which represent the uh, natural flow and the smoothness of the video. So we'll use experiment two to compare with the models. So um, here, uh, all the comparisons are made on the VIT4 data set. And uh, you can see here that uh, our model actually achieves uh, high, uh, the highest accuracy in terms of LPIPS, which corresponds to the natural and smoothness of the video. So it uh, surpassed the state of the arts model in um, models in uh, this metric. And we are very proud of that. And uh, regarding the PSNR, uh, it also achieves good, um, good uh, quality, uh, comparing it to both uh, models. Uh, and now Isra will continue with the discussion and the conclusion. So to put all this into graphs, we uh, actually created two graphs, one for the temporal coherence and the other for accuracy. And these know that the temporal coherence, the less is the better. So our uh, graph here for RB began in orange, that shows that we conducted a very best, a very good results according uh, to the state of the art. Also, according to the accuracy, we achieved slightly better accuracy than TCOGAN. However, we couldn't exceed our BBN because of the reduced model. Now, moving on to the best part, you can see that our high resolution output here on the right and the low resolution input on the left. And we conducted this on experiment 4.2 and on uh, VID4 test set. This is a closer look to uh, get a better uh, picture of uh, our experiment. You can see that on the left, there are more fine details and more uh, uh, clarity. Yes, and this is our test set. We created this ourselves and we also made sure that it has scenario change. And also to get a better sense of it, there is a closer lock here. Yeah, so you can see that the faces now are, are more clear and no blurring effect uh, is obvious and uh, it is distinct and uh, all the lines are uh, fine. Also the chair here are more clear. Uh, you can see the lines and it is more obvious and distinct. Now to the final remarks. We actually faced some challenges. <laughs> yeah. So the first one is that we needed more uh, powerful computational resources to conduct our uh, test because we used GAN networks. And this was one of the challenges. The second one is that we've introduced uh, more uh, or, or less sub-optimal sub details uh, when cases have more details or more artifacts. And to solve this problem, we actually uh, recommend using different downsampling techniques that introduce more generality and introduce more domains into the test set. And uh, also we recommend using uh, or training on a model uh, that has more faces and text. So in conclusion, we can say that we are proud that we achieved our high bosses to find the middle ground that actually exceeds the, the state of the art in, in uh, regard to temporal coherence. And we also uh, increased the, the accuracy slightly with reduced models. So as we mentioned, <laughs> our VVN uh, it was inspiring for the accuracy and TUGAN was inspiring for the coherence. And here's our uh, RBBGAN model that has the best in both words. And uh, regarding our outcome, we now finalized draft two, 
and we are about to finalize our paper uh, to be submitted to uh, the ICMLA conference, hopefully. And finally, we would like to acknowledge Dr. Sharif Salama, our uh, thesis director, and also our direct supervisor, Dr. Mustafa Youssef and Dr. Hisham Ayai. And also thank you all uh, for your attending and for your time. And that's it.